If you've been with me this far, you deserve a little something. So I'm gonna let you in on a big secret we have in medicine, what I call the biggest secret in medicine. Um, to get there though, I'm gonna to need to describe to you the difference between the relative risk and the absolute risk difference and introduce the concept called number needed to treat. I'm gonna describe some of the ethical implications of number needed to treat and show you how you can apply the number needed to treat to everyday medical decisions. Um, but to frame this properly, I want to take you to the Las Vegas Strip to a very unusual casino. You're walking along the Vegas Strip one day and you see a sign for a little known casino, the We Tell You Your Chances Casino. Walking in, how could you resist? You see two slot machines. Each one costs $10,000 to play, but the payouts are a bit different. The machine on the left pays out $1,100,000 on average every 100 pulls of the lever. The machine on the right pays out $1,100,000 on average every 200 pulls of the lever. Which slot machine do you play? At first, you may think, well, the machine on the left has better odds of winning. In fact, on average, if I play 100 times, I'll spend a million dollars and win $1.1 million, so this is a great deal. But then you probably think, hold up, $10,000 is a lot of money. I can barely afford to play once, let alone 100 times. I'm going to the all-you-can-eat buffet instead. All right, so what does that have to do with medications. Well, what it has to do with medications is that when we do medical studies, we're assessing the effect of a medication on the population at large. Like those slot machines, which I gave you the odds if you pull 100 times or 200 times, we're saying, how many lives do we save if we treat 1,000 people with this drug or 10,000 people with this drug? We aren't really asking, what is the chance of saving your life, that one pull of the slot machine lever? So even if, overall, if you could pull the slot machine 1,000 times, you would make money, you don't get to. You only get to pull the slot machine once. And so there's a conflict between the population effects of a drug and the individual effects of the drug. And we can resolve that conflict by looking at the difference between the relative risk and the absolute risk difference. So to give you an example, I'm gonna talk about this drug, Lipitor, which you may have heard of, also known as Atorvastatin. It's a cholesterol medication, and here's an ad um, that tells you that Lipitor reduces the risk of heart attack by 36%. So what does that mean? Well, if you drill down, you see a little asterisk here that says that means in a large clinical study, 3% of patients taking a sugar pill or placebo had a heart attack compared to 2% of patients taking Lipitor. Wait, 3% compared to 2%. That sounds like 1%, right? Not 36%. Where are they getting the 36%? Well, the 36% comes from a relative risk, and the 1% is an absolute risk difference. So right off the bat, you can see one of the major differences between these two metrics. Relative risks are much bigger, generally. They sound much more impressive than that absolute risk difference. But they can be misleading. And to show you why, I want to take you to this study looking at the rate of death among triathletes. Okay, So this was a study that cataloged people who died during triathlons and found that the risk of death during a triathlon was 1.74 per 100,000 competitor days, which means that if you had a triathlon with 100,000 people in it, 1.74 or one or two would die on average during that triathlon. Now, that sounds kind of high, actually, and, and indeed it is. The background rate of death in the United States is 0.5 per 100,000 people per year. Triathlon is usually just a single day. And so if you do kind of the back of the envelope calculation, you can see that your risk of death in a triathlon is a thousand fold higher than your risk of death on any other day of the year. And that should sound very scary. And we say, oh my gosh, why would we ever let anyone do a triathlon? But when you look at the raw numbers, you see, you know, 1.74 out of 100,000 is, is still a vanishingly small number. The vast majority of people are just fine to run a triathlon. So the relative risk inflated the sort of magnitude of the problem. Now, how does this work for our Lipitor example? Well, the Lipitor people told us that among a, if 100 people took Lipitor, two of them would have a heart attack. And if 100 people took placebo, three of them would have a heart attack. And we simply said, oh, well, that's 2% versus 3%. So Lipitor is 1% better. And we are correct. That is the absolute risk difference. Absolute risk difference is subtraction. 3% minus 2% is 1%. Pharmaceutical companies don't like that because 1% sounds pretty paltry, right? But the relative risk 
2% versus 3%, 2% divided by 3%, 2 divided by 3.66, well, that starts to sound pretty good. So they can say, oh, well, if the risk in placebo is, is 1, then the risk in Lipitor is 0.66. That's, you know, 33 less. Um, there's some rounding errors in there, uh, you know, in what they give us in the advertisement, but basically a 33, 36% reduction in heart attacks, which they, they're both true, but they're expressing the same data in different ways, and I think it can sometimes be misleading. Now, if we look at this, what we can see is that in both groups we have two people that are having, at least two people who are having a heart attack. And then there's that, that one extra person in the placebo group that has a heart attack. So if you look at this carefully and squint your eyes, you can sort of say, hey, you know, really, it seems like Lipitor is just helping one guy out of 100, right? One person out of 100. So that brings us to the number needed to treat, okay? So if we know the absolute risk difference is 1%, we can figure out that one out of 100 people are benefited, specifically benefited from, from Lipitor. All right, that's the number needed to treat. We need to treat 100 people with Lipitor to prevent one heart attack. Formally, the number needed to treat is defined as the inverse of the absolute risk difference. So 1 divided by 0.01, 1 1%, 1 divided by 0.01 is 100. The number needed to treat is 100. If I told you that the absolute risk difference um, if I told you, for instance, that the rate of uh, heart attack was, uh, was 20% in the placebo group and 10% in the Lipitor group, that would be an absolute risk difference of 10%. And the number needed to treat would be 1 divided by 10% or 1 divided by 0.1 or 10. Okay? So that's how we can get to the number needed to treat. But the real number needed to treat here is 100. Is that a good number needed to treat? There's no rule here. There's no threshold you're trying to beat or anything like that. You have to take into, into account the risk of the thing that you're doing. So to give you some examples, if you take, you would need to treat 42 people after a major heart attack with aspirin to prevent one death. Is that worth it? Well, when you ask if it's worth it, you say, well, how expensive is aspirin? You know, it's pretty cheap. Death is pretty bad. Uh, what are the side effects of aspirin? Not, not much. You know, some people get stomach aches and things like that. There's some bleeding risk, et cetera. But, but this seems pretty good. And in fact, we say, yeah, sure, we'll give 42 people aspirin to save one life. That, that sounds like a great deal, right? Whereas for other things, you might uh, have more pause, right? So we need to treat 217 smokers with CAT scans of the chest to prevent one death from lung cancer. Now, death from lung cancer is terrible, giving 217 smokers CAT scans is expensive and it exposes them to radiation that they might not otherwise need to be exposed to. So the number needed to treat doesn't give us any hard and fast guidelines, but it helps us assess the utility of giving an indiv individual treatment. So what's the secret? <laughs> what am I talking about? Why is this the biggest secret in medicine? Well, if I need to treat 100 people to save one life, I'm essentially treating 99 people unnecessarily, and the big secret is I don't know who's who, okay? My societal obligation as a physician is to save as many lives as I can, and that is in opposition to my obligation to try to benefit my patient. Because yes, I want to save as many lives as possible, which means I should give drugs like Lipitor to as many patients as possible to save those lives. But on an individual patient level, if my patient says, Doc, is this drug going to save my life? The honest answer is, well, probably not. Chances are you are not that one out of 100 people, but you might be. And is it worth it to you to take this drug just in case you're that one out of 100 people? This does not mean that you should stop taking your medicines. If the medicine is cheap and without side effects, a one in 100 chance it might save my life is totally worth it, right? Talk to your doctor. If the drug is, you know, a vitamin C pill that costs nothing and you have to treat a thousand people to save a life, that could totally be worth it. It's just totally cheap, right? But if it's a highly toxic drug and you're vomiting every day you take it and the chance that it's going to benefit you specifically is quite low, well, then maybe you need to talk to your doctor about taking that drug. Look for the number needed to treat in medical studies. Some studies will report it and kudos to them when they do. If they don't, and they report the absolute risk reduction, now you know how to calculate the number needed to treat from that to help you make decisions with your doctor about what medications are worth it for you. A few take home points. 
The absolute difference is not as dramatic as the relative risk, but it's good information. The number needed to treat is the inverse of the absolute risk difference. Numbers needed to treat have no particular threshold. They're all over the map. Uh, but the fact is that most people will not directly benefit from most interventions. The catch is we don't know for which of those medicines you're that one lucky person. The number needed to treat gives you a metric that helps you weigh the risks and benefits of drugs in a fair way. Thanks a lot. I'll catch you next time.